Stay tuned, in this episode we finish up the internet connected RGB arcade clock thing. And it turns out pretty. back and today we're going to talk about the internet connected arcade clock. Now we worked on this a couple episodes ago. You may recall that we walked through the hardware design, we set up the circuit, we etched it on the Nomad 883 and we played back some arcade animations, advent calendar and all sorts of neat retro arcade graphics. And so that was a lot of fun. In the last episode we talked about the source code to get the firmware to do all that cool stuff and today we're going to be talking about building the enclosure. Now there's lots of types of enclosures you could build for something like this and to be quite honest these pixels are blindingly bright so you always have to diffuse them with something be it a piece of paper or some opaque glass, something of that nature. Well, I found another solution. We're gonna use a canvas. So this is an art canvas that actually, if you put this behind, which this happens to be the perfect dimensions, it will project it actually through the canvas. On the front side, you have a white gesso, which is a, a base coat preparation for the canvas material. And we're gonna do some three-dimensional shadow box arcade graphics on the front of it to kind of frame the picture. And then we'll mount up all the battery and the circuit board in the back of the frame here. So in order to do that, we're gonna have to do some research on some graphics. So let's jump over to the computer and look at that process. All right, so first thing we're gonna do before we prepare the graphics is to do some quick research. So there's a lot of reference material on Google. We're gonna search for Pac-Man graphics. Look at images. There's lots of different graphics. We're gonna end up drawing some of these sprites, some of the actual characters. And so you could use the sprite sheet to look at that and use that as a reference. But in the end, I'm gonna need to trace it down for Illustrator. And some of these don't have sharp edges, so I'm gonna draw them myself by hand. And I'm not gonna draw them entirely by hand. I'm going to use a tool called Piskel. It's an open source pixel and sprite animation creation software and it makes it really easy. I'll pop that up real quick. I've already got it installed and it looks something like this. Basically gives you blank templates. You can see all of the sprites I've already drawn and colored here and you can make perfect 8-bit graphics and you can do multiple animations and they can have multi-frame animations. And this is actually the same tool I used to draw the animations for the RGB matrix. In this case we're just drawing some sprites that we're going to use statically that will then export from Piskel bring it into Adobe Illustrator, separate the colors, and then laser cut all the pieces of it. What? Now if you look down here, we could add a new frame. So it allows you to do simple rudimentary patterns. It's got basic fill and draw tools. So you could do something like, like a quick demonstration of how to how I would uh, do this layout. And this is just a bell. So you can do all sorts of stuff, whatever you want to do with it. With all of these, I'm pretty much just going around with a black outline just to give it that real retro feel. There you go. So you could do a really quick graphics like this. What I'm doing after that is I'll just get a copy of the bitmap image. Then we'll load up Illustrator. In Illustrator, I've already got some graphics in here that I've split up, but I'll show you how I'm going about this process. Basically paste this in here. Illustrator has a lot of uh, great capabilities to trace. So I would determine the number of colors. Right here we have four, but we'll need to include one for the background. So I would image trace with six colors and I'm gonna I'll change it to actually to five colors. Now that it's traced that image, I can expand it, right click, ungroup it. I can delete the background color. I don't need those pieces. And then I have my image, it's all vectorized. So I could say, you know, I want all of the yellow. And if I go like that, then I have the segment of yellow that the laser cutter could cut out from a yellow sheet of paper. And if I wanna do a silhouette, then I could take this outline here, release the compound. And then we have a silhouette outline of it. I could also cut the brown as a separate layer. You see that layer there which would work like that. So that's why I'm deconstructing the sprite after it's been created. And I can then scale these because they're in vector format and make them the right size without losing any resolution. And then I load that up in RDWorks. RDWorks allows you to create the toolpath for the laser cutter to cut on these vector lines. And so in order to do that, we just have to export this or save it as DXF format. And then I would load up RDWorks. All right, so RDWorks is the software that allows me to translate DXF or vector images into a format that the laser cutter understands. Basically it creates toolpaths that we can then export as files and upload those on the laser cutter to run the programs. In this case we'll load up the 8-bit arcade. This is a lot of stuff I've already pulled in here. You could also import additional DXF files and basically you see all of the slices that I've created from Illustrator. Once we have those we can put them on different layers. For example all the blue, all the orange, all the red. And it's okay if they overlap as, as long as they're not being cut at the same time. All the black silhouettes. Uh, and then I can save those 
those out to U files. And by saving them to U files, it'll save the relative coordinates to the, from the origin um, and the DXF or vector graphics in a format that the cutter understands. Also indicates the tool path where the laser head will be moving from piece to piece. And it does some intelligent planning like cutting the inner circle before it cuts an outer circle just in case they're falling on your platform. So as to keep the cutting organized and connected to the main material while the machine is uh, executing. So that said, uh, this is the plot that I'm gonna use to cut out the templates on the laser cutter. And I've already saved these to U file, put them on a thumbstick, and then we'll take them over to the laser cutter and cut these things So we just finished cutting these out on the laser cutter. We're over at the art desk. And you can see on this black one here that they're just barely cut out. So I'll have to break them out. I want to run the power a little low so that I wouldn't lose all of the fine detailed parts. So I've got about eight colors. You saw some of those getting cut. Now I'm gonna take them apart and start assembling the individual characters. Once we have the characters, then we're gonna mount them on that canvas. And then we'll begin to build up the shadow box that's gonna frame the RGB matrix. <laughs> Alright, so we finished assembling all the sprites over here, and it was pretty tedious work to get all those little laser cut pieces in the right place. We used some scrapbooking foam and self-adhesive strips to assemble all of the parts and to make them float. So it gives it a real dimensional look to these 8-bit graphics. So I'll give you some close-ups of that. Next thing we have to do is go over to the workbench and assemble the electronics into the frame in preparation for decorating the frame with these guys. Cue awkward silence. So there you have it. Construction wasn't too bad. We threw it together over here on the workbench, laid out all of our sprites, and added a couple dots and power pills just for aesthetics. And then we covered it up with a sheet of plexiglass on six standoffs. Let's go over to the desk and recap the project. Hey, so hopefully you enjoyed this project. It was a long and sometimes complex project in that we created the circuit in the first episode. Second episode, we talked about all the source code. Now we can do mashups with lots of libraries to do some really cool stuff. In the end, it comes together in a really nice package. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. The parts and details of this build down in the description and on the website. Please take a moment to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I hope you have a wonderful holiday. Be safe out there and I can't wait to see you next time.